Hi there. When we create an electrical circuit, we'll need to connect at least a few components to one another. One of the easiest ways to do this is with a solderless breadboard. A solderless breadboard is usually a large white plastic component with rows of holes in it. Breadboards have rows of five holes. All five holes in any row are electrically connected to one another. Each row of holes is isolated from any other row of five holes. This includes the rows of holes on either side of this central channel. So this row of holes is electrically isolated from this row of holes directly across the channel from it. The terminals of electrical components, for example this resistor, can easily be pushed into the breadboard holes. This allows us to use the breadboard to quickly interconnect circuit elements in order to create electrical circuits. For example, if I want to connect a second resistor to this terminal of this resistor, I simply plug one terminal of this resistor into a hole in the same row as the terminal that I want to connect to. Now these two terminals are connected, these two terminals are isolated from one another. The central channel is used when we create circuits containing integrated circuit chips packaged as dual inline packages, generally referred to as DIPs. The chip is inserted into the breadboard so that it straddles the central channel. Now all of the chip pins are isolated from one another so that we can connect individual pins to various other circuit components. If it's convenient, I can use jumper wires, just pieces of wire that have the right diameter to fit into a breadboard hole, to directly connect two rolls of holes. For example, if I want to connect this pin of the chip to this terminal of the resistor, I can simply insert one terminal of my jumper wire into a hole in this row and another terminal there. These are now electrically connected. That's really all there is to breadboards. However, there are a few common variations on the theme which are worth mentioning. Many breadboards have what are called bus strips running along the entire length of the breadboard. Each bus strip will generally have either a blue line or a red line next to it. All the holes in each bus strip are electrically connected. The two bus strips are isolated from one another though. These strips make it easy to make connections at multiple locations in your breadboard. This is generally used mostly in larger circuits. It's also common to have larger breadboards which are essentially several of our smaller breadboards clipped together. This breadboard, for example, has tabs on the side which make it easy to combine breadboards. The new breadboard has twice as many holes and four breast strips rather than two. Still fancier breadboards have banana plug type connectors integrated into them. These connectors can make it easier to connect your circuits to certain types of equipment. Just insert banana plugs into these connectors. Now, when you want to make connections between the connectors and the breadboard, simply run a wire from the banana plug to the appropriate location on your breadboard. The basic use of the breadboard, however, is the same as for our original small breadboard. The other features are just intended to make creating larger circuits more convenient. 